big focus this hour. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is all set to visit Italy this week for the G7 summit, making this his first trip abroad after swearing in for his third term as Prime Minister of India. The summit will be held from the 13th of June to the 15th of June in a luxury resort in uh, Apulia in Italy. Well, leaders like US President Joe Biden, French President Emmanuel Macron and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau will all be in attendance. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky is also scheduled to join a session about the ongoing war in Ukraine. PM Modi is likely to leave for Italy on the 13th of June and return on the 15th of June. He will be joined by top Indian officials including External Affairs Minister S. Shankar and National Security Advisor Ajit Doval. The PM is expected to meet with the Italian PM uh, and the G7 grouping on this trip. The summit will be focusing on global stability, the Ukraine war, as well as the conflict in Gaza. Italy, the current chair of the G7, has also invited leaders from various developing countries and international organizations to the summit. Joining us at this point to discuss this uh, big story is Mahesh Sachdev, former diplomat. We also have Robinder Sachdev, international affairs expert with us. Joyita Basu, editor of the Sunday Guardian, is joining us live. Associate Professor Saurabh is also with us on the broadcast. Let me... Uh, uh, bring you in here first, uh, Ambassador Sachdev, uh, on what do you believe will be the agenda of uh, the Prime Minister when he touches down in Italy for this very, very crucial summit? Ambassador Sachdev, can you hear me? 3.0. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can now. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, this being the first foray by Prime Minister Modi in Modi 3 uh, would uh, obviously uh, invite plenty of attention. Uh, it gives him a chance to reiterate the continuity of Indian policies uh, towards much of the world and uh, re-energize our POSI on... Uh, uh, both economic and political issues of the world. Uh, I think uh, there's no gainsay in uh, reiterating our uh, uh, our support and uh, our increased emphasis on the global south, uh, particularly in the Middle East. And uh, there will be also uh, India's role in uh, uh, Ukraine conflict, India and EU are supposed to be negotiating for past 20 years or so a free trade agreement. Uh, similar agreements are uh, also in the works with the UK. Uh, so all these with the bilaterals would, uh, would uh, uh, be discussed. And I think uh, Prime Minister is going to have an important meeting with the host Italian Prime Minister, who was in India last year, as well as uh, U.S. President Joe Biden, uh, whose national security advisor is expected to visit India shortly for the first major contact at that level uh, in Modi 3-0. So all this is uh, important. And uh, I think uh, India's role this being the 11th time that G7 has invited India at the summit uh, and fifth time Prime Minister Modi personally has been there uh, shows that growing acceptance of India uh, in this G7 format. Yes, indeed. Uh, let me also, uh, in fact, take that across to Robinder Sachdev. Robinder, uh, uh, you know, uh, what all will be, uh, uh, you know, discussed during the summit? What is likely to be the summit's theme uh, this year round? And of also, of course, Italy uh, has taken a good step by making the summit more representative by inviting heads of state of developing nations and also organizations to the summit. Thank you so much, Uday. A pleasure to be with you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a couple of big picture things. Firstly, uh, fresh off his third victory uh, as the Prime Minister of India, Modi ji will have the chance to reiterate and, you know, again, hard sell the attractiveness of India as an economic destination, right? Remember that G7 is primarily supposed to be an economic grouping, though it's kind of now, you know, segueing into political and geosecurity, etc. But uh, the, the key theme, I think, for the Prime Minister's point would be to kind of, you know, again, persuade, convince, cajole, sell India, you know, 
as a growing, rising destination with one of the, if not the best, but one of the best economic prospects over the next five years in a world which is marked hugely by chaos and uncertainty. There is kind of uncertainty in Europe, the elections out there, China and multiple things, right? So India is a very calm, soothing and attractive destination. I think that's the one big, you know, flag that Prime Minister would carry. Now that said, there would be, of course, bilaterals, uh, depends with what all leaders, but I think probably we are expecting uh, with President Biden also, I would guess, I'm not so sure or it's not known as of now yet, but they could be with, with Biden also, with Georgia Milani also, and who knows with whichever other leaders. The point is, I think, India will come under immense pressure also, because the key theme of this summit is Ukraine and more sanctions on Russia. Right. So there will be more pressure again on India with regards to sanctions and, you know, curtailing India's trade and business with Russia. So that would continue to be a pressure point, I think. Absolutely. Other than that, so that's with respect to India, because the G7 are saying that to all the countries, cut down, cut down, cut down, including to China, that cut down your business and trade with Russia. And there are more sanctions coming up if you do not. So that will remain, I think. Uh, the key focus of the summit, again, back is Ukraine. They're looking to figure out, you know, an economic package for Ukraine, security deals with Ukraine, bilateral ones, not the NATO, but bilateral. Each country is doing a deal with Ukraine. I think around 15 countries have already done. And I think yesterday or today, Biden has also signed, or the U.S. is also signing a bilateral deal with Ukraine. That brings to, I think, around 17 the number of countries out of NATO's 28, 29, whatever, with whom uh, there is a bilateral defense and security mechanism being put in place. And that is being put in place because one, NATO on the whole is not moving on it because NATO includes uh, America. And there is also, remember, one key thing is happening. Biden and NATO are all trying to Trump proof the future. Right. So if Trump, you know, comes to power in the U.S. in uh, November elections, he's already said he may, you know, take whatever stance. So the Biden administration is racing and NATO countries are racing to strike up one on one bilateral deals with Ukraine so that whosoever, I mean, even if Trump comes and he says NATO won't do it. But these countries bilaterally are helping Ukraine, both in terms of defense as well as in terms of economy. In terms of defense, the U.S. has the deal they're signing is a 10 year deal which will provide training to Ukrainian military. It will look into, not only look into, it will get into production of weapons and armaments in Ukraine, etc. So that's all out there. The one thing that, uh, again, with respect to Ukraine, and you mentioned in your opening that the Prime Minister is back on the 15th, uh, I'm actually pretty, uh, I was pretty much looking forward to see, and I don't think it's happening. You see, the immediately the day after 15th is a peace conference for Ukraine being held in Switzerland to which, again, the U.S. and the West has been persuading as many countries to attend as can be possible. And I think there must be, again, pressure on India to attend that meeting. But I think probably India is not attending. So that would be a little interesting thing for us to see also. Okay, Joyita Basu, come in here uh, on, on what you're expecting from this, uh, this summit, uh, Prime Minister's attendance there, the themes which will be uh, on the table during uh, the actual summit meetings, and also uh, which key bilaterals are you keeping a close eye on, Joyita, in Italy? Uh, thank you, Uday. Uh, first of all, uh, while Ukraine may be the focus of G7 summit that is starting in Italy from uh, tomorrow, uh, definitely not. It, 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 I mean, uh, Ukraine is not on India's agenda. You know, I mean, the G7 countries, it may be on the, about Ukraine, but for India, it is not. From whatever reports I'm getting, India will be talking about artificial intelligence, ethical uh, use of AI. There will be, India will be talking. India, this is going to, for India, it is going to be a continuation of what India hosted in New Delhi, the G20 summit. India will come across as a bridge builder between the global south and the global north. India will be talking about, you know, Africa, will be talking about the larger picture and definitely not 
focusing on uh, Ukraine beyond the fact that there should be a cessation of hostilities, which India's stand has been throughout. And I don't think even the U uh, European countries and the G7 countries wanted that they would be able to make India change its policy, specifically when it comes to uh, business, you know, whatever uh, oil that India has been buying or not. So, you see, so I, I don't think it's that pressure is going to work, number one. But yes, India, when you are looking at the summit, it is an economic summit and it is obviously, frankly, let us not forget one thing. When you look at the leaders who are attending the G7, I mean, where is Emmanuel Macron now? He does not, he is unlikely to win the next election. Except for Georgia Meloni, there is no G7 leader who can say with confidence that yes, I am on a, I am very sure footed when it comes to the political situation in my country. Most of them to say it colloquially are basically about to lose all their elections. So, what importance do these world leaders have or hold in terms of bringing peace or rather sanctioning Russia? You see, I mean, Mr. Biden cannot even, I mean, the way he is definitely not even in his senses most of the time. And if an election is held in the US, a fair election, if uh, the Democrats do not rig the elections, there is a huge chance that Mr. Trump will win the election. So, the whole point is that what legitimacy have these leaders have? All right. And anyway, we know how Trump and all, you know, it would be interesting to see. If Donald Trump comes, it will be interesting to see what happens with the Russia-Ukraine war uh, 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 after that. So, frankly, this whole focus on Ukraine is basically, and one of the reasons, let us not forget one thing, one of the reasons why they are in so much political trouble in their own countries is because of the recession they have, because of the economic hardships that they have imposed on their people because of this, because of their Ukraine cause, you know, because of the reason, because they want to uh, sideline Russia and destroy Putin and destroy Russia, etc. That is one of the reasons why their economies are in such bad shape. So, you know, I mean, frankly, the more they pursue this for whatever be the cause, very, uh, I, I would say, you know, blinded, uh, I, you know, very, very, they are turning a blind eye to much more serious problem of China. They are actively kind of appeasing China on the other hand. So, the whole thing is that the G7, if you are looking at it, you know, this collection of rich countries, I mean, frankly, they are not doing anything to the world. They are not bringing anything on the table. So, India has more to offer to them than I would say they have to the developing world, um, uh, to the developing countries that they have invited. Yes. Okay. Let me, in fact, also, uh, uh, you know, take that straight across to uh, Saurabh as well, who is live with us. Uh, Saurabh, uh, uh, you know, uh, this is, of course, being looked at very, very closely as it's the first foreign visit uh, by Prime Minister Modi after taking charge. Uh, in his third avatar as a PM of the country. Uh, it's, of course, uh, you know, a chance for the Prime Minister to meet uh, once again the heads of state in Italy. Uh, what do you believe will be top of our agenda there? Uh, yes, thank you. The, the question that to, uh, what India is going to do, that is very, very uh, important at this uh, stage at the 20 this so eight meeting the important issue that what already have discussed that india's political stability that is very crucial and other political that countries so suppose be then that the election is due and other european countries so that political leaders may not continue may not meet in the other meet, in next meetings so that is very very crucial that india is one of the great big market and politically stable market so it uh, is a long term gain that other countries may gain from india and they also have very limited things to offer to india and what india has to do in the vice versa so the, number 1 number 2 their india's the position on that they may pressurize india on uh, iran jet chabahar the another issue is in uh, southeast uh, south china sea that how china is progressing and what uh, they can uh, india can offer to them so, so that is two important issues. And another important issue is Russia. 
so now that this is the important very very tricky questions that g8 countries uh, may look uh, what uh, india they may pressurize but what i feel at this stage india is in a very very comfortable position and india has lots of, of things to offer from ai to uh may more uh, more uh, more supply that chains what uh, from that uh, china to that shifting countries to india so that uh, is very very important issues now the important uh, that what india they may pressurize india for this uh, iran to so iran or russia but uh, this is very important because russia is a long term partner of india and india cannot suddenly shift its foreign policy and what russia and china so they are also coming closer so this is the important uh, time that required or this uh, g7 they all uh, have been different uh, in us but they have to make something very good okay i think we are having some connection issues it seems with sorab there let me uh, come back across to uh, uh, joyta basu who's also in our studio joyta uh, you know uh, interestingly uh, robinder was bringing up the point of Uh, why uh, i think he was questioning why india is not uh, attending the summit on ukraine and switzerland or why at least the prime minister is not attending i think there will be a representation from india in fact one of our senior officials will be present there what's your response to him jayanta oh uh, well that is because you know i mean when you have a peace summit if you do not even call you know you want to strike peace and okay if you are not going to call the quote and quote the aggressor then what is the point of having a peace summit what is the point of just sitting there and discussing amongst yourselves and oh russia is such a bad guy oh russia should be sanctioned sanctions on russia is not working are not working how does it help if so what exactly is the purpose of your peace summit if not bringing peace because unless and until you get all the parties involved in the conflict on the table there cannot be any peace but that is the fi- fundamental problem in fact that is the problem it has been the problem for the last 2 years now ever since this particular conflict broke in february 2022 that and every time that there has been talk of some kind of peace deal about a meeting between zelensky and putin it is the west particularly uh, at that time it was boris johnson and then it was joe biden they have all thrown a spanner in the works they are all against peace so this peace summit that they are having it's nothing more than a farce yes okay let me in fact uh, take that also very quickly uh, uh, back across uh, to Uh, robinder sarstev who of course is with us as well robinder uh, you know uh, also now talking about uh, the bilaterals because that will also be a very very important of course uh, a chance for pm modi uh, to meet with various dignitaries there and i believe uh, uh, there are uh, options and and perhaps plans to meet uh, several dignitaries there including perhaps the canadian prime minister justin trudeau as well uh, to whom uh, we will uh, if if we meet to one to one convey Uh, our strong disapproval of how canada is giving shelter to certain anti india elements there which key bilaterals are you uh, looking forward to and what's going to be the indian viewpoint in that robinder thank you see i think the one bilateral everyone would always look forward and to and you can respond biden. to joyta also if you want yeah sure i will yeah biden uh, yeah to uh, joyta's point i'll add to it this peace summit in a way is not a peace summit it is more a summit of bringing together people who believe in our can right so that's how it has been positioned they inviting all countries whosoever they are you know able to cajole and persuade and bring along it is and zelensky had i think touted a number that there will be over 100 countries represented at this, so queue, uh, uh, at this uh, at this hello. summit right so the, so, so, so the so the point is that uh, this summit is more a demonstration of how many countries are in our camp versus the russian camp so therefore it beats the very idea of a peace summit one uh, secondly uh, the bilaterals but there's another big issue on the economic front which i think prime minister modi would take up with each and every bilateral or group that he gets there is rising protectionism across the world america is raising tariffs biden has raised tariffs on china trump says when he comes he will raise tariffs all across for all imports into america by 10% even biden is going in that front the democrats and republicans both in america are kind of on the same page though trump says he wants more tariffs right look at the rise of the right in europe 
these are also nationalist you know movements governments political parties and all so there is going to be an overall trend towards rising protectionism higher tariffs and that is something i think that we would absolutely want to discuss and negotiate and prime minister modi would put forth in all his meetings wherever that you know this whole idea of you know raising barriers it doesn't help anyone i mean we would also put up our tariffs if you put up your tariffs so i think discussion on tariffs uh, would definitely or a trend or a global mechanism or a approach towards this rising trend of protectionism and tariffs would definitely be one item at least in our agenda uh, should be there or in other countries agendas also then again back to you know the overall economic and such would be issues of climate change who is you know again climate change financing has still not been i think resolved to a level of satisfaction uh, to the developing south especially you know uh, uh, yes to the global south let's say so there would be these kind of you know uh, topics on uh, e- economic uh, the things but i would say i would definitely flag rising protectionism would be very high on our agenda because that's something which would impact our trade Uh, you know our exports and all uh, so th- and that is something which is rising in the world so a discussion around those lines would also be there now also ambassador sachdev uh, we do expect uh, uh, for uh, you know the summit to be discussing the middle east the situation there and also uh, the situation vis-a-vis the continuing russia ukraine war as well uh, will there be any resolution that you believe will uh, will come about on these two issues uh, uh any progress on these fronts uh, what will be the agenda of of a majority of the nations attending uh the viewpoints vis-a-vis these two pressing issues which which will obviously be top of the minds of several leaders including from the west and europe i think uh, you raised an important issue uh, g7 summit normally issues a declaration and uh, the declaration is uh, uh for the seven countries plus european union uh which uh, without uh, countries which are special invitees such as india and 11 others being participants to it so uh, g7 is going to have a declaration i imagine but it's not uh, to which india is going to be necessarily a party we are there as special invitees and we uh, do not have this uh, mandate to sign g7 of course as you know we are the fifth largest economy in the world and we deserve to be in g7 but that's a different political issue uh secondly in terms of middle east and ukraine war our situation our position is uh, uh quite they ha- it has a degree of overlap with g7 position but at the same time they are major differences we uh do not as the other panelists have also mentioned we do not subscribe to the uh, peace conference con- formula we may take part in it but it will be more like an observer than full participant i imagine uh, we have important ties with russia which is part of our strategic autonomy and we not going to give it up Uh, just to curry favor with g7 uh similarly on uh, middle east we have very important stakes it's uh, a very large trading partner to the tune of 200 billion dollars with india we do depend on gulf for majority of our oil imports we have 9 million indian expatriates living there and uh, there are important security and other ties with israel uh, so all these uh, make us an important interlocutor and participant in what is going on and an affected party we have probably the strongest naval contingent in uh, western indian ocean in uh, uh, gulf of aden and uh, red sea area and we have been uh, uh doing our bit for keeping uh, peace in the troubled waters uh, of yamani coast so that is an important uh, contribution 
we also have stakes vis-a-vis India Europe Economic Corridor, which is currently moribund, but uh, uh, the war, once it ends, might uh, see changes. Chabahar Port, again, is an alternative to uh, North South uh, Transit Corridor. Uh, I should also add here that much below the surface, uh, a deal is being worked out for, as a grand bargain between Saudi Arabia and United States. Uh, which would see uh, Saudi Arabia's security being guaranteed, nuclear uh, power being provided, is recognition between Israel and uh, Saudi Arabia, and uh, uh, all sort of possibilities, advanced weapons from the United States, security guarantees, etc., etc. And I think uh, the bilateral between in, uh, Mr. Modi and uh, Joe Biden uh, would probably have this uh, figured. The visit of uh, USNSA next week to India might have something to do with uh, this as a major talking point because it will be affecting us. Saudi Arabia is uh, an important partner for us and so is Israel. And the United States remains uh, the top uh, uh, interlocutor with the VS. So okay. uh, the, this may be a, a, a very important uh, point. Right. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.